What is up gamers? Welcome back to another episode of Hot Fix, your daily dose of gaming news. My name is Max, yesterday was April 4th, 2017, and let's get right into it. First things first, Bioware has finally detailed the upcoming fixes they're making on Mass Effect Andromeda. The first patch is hitting this Thursday, and it's going to include improved facial animations, an increased inventory limit, an option to bypass those transitions when going between planets and stuff in the galaxy map, and it's also going to make those Sudoku-like remnant puzzles a bit easier to solve, as well as a few other visual fixes. And then over the next few months, a few other updates are going to be coming that will do things such as create more variety in the character creator, including improving on characters' hair and just their general appearances. It'll improve the male rider's romance options, and improve some dialogue related to the trans character, Hanley Abrams. As for multiplayer, this week's patch should fix some of the latency issues, and it's going to add the first chapter in a three-part event called the Remnant Investigation. And then of course, later on we'll be seeing new maps, guns, characters, and all that. Cool, I've played quite a bit of the game so far, and I haven't really had any game-breaking issues, but there have been a lot of just lack of polish type of issues, including times where I've had to restart, my autosaves weren't loading, it seemed like the game had crashed, just really, really weird animations. The facial animations, I've said this many times, they aren't awful, they're not game-ruining, but they're bad. I'll have more on that on my Mass Effect video later this week. So a group of people were making cheats for games like Overwatch and other Blizzard titles, and Blizzard went to sue them, and that group now owes Blizzard $8 million. Germany-based maker of cheats for Overwatch, World of Warcraft, and other games, Bossland GmbH, has been ordered to pay Blizzard $8.6 million by a federal court in California. The judgment was entered after Bossland chose not to defend itself following a denial of its motion earlier this month to have the case thrown out for lack of jurisdiction. There are 42,818 counts of copyright infringement. Blizzard argues that the company creating bots such as Honor Buddy, Watch Over Tyrant, and Hearth Buddy have bypassed Blizzard's anti-cheat protection, altered its games without permission, and effectively resold its code. Thanks Polygon for that. Blizzard tried suing them before over Heroes of the Storm cheats, but they lost and were ordered to pay Bossland's legal fees. That's not the case this time around. Bossland also brought up that there are still four other lawsuits against it that are still pending in Germany. So basically, due to this lawsuit, they can not be selling any of the cheat code products anymore in the United States, and the 8.6 million will also go towards covering Blizzard's legal fees. Yeah guys, don't try and fight the king, you're gonna lose. So I reported last week that Atlas wasn't allowing PlayStation 4 gamers to use that share button just at all during Persona 5, and now they are threatening streamers who are going too far into the story while live. Basically, people who tried doing so will be faced with content ID blocks and will be under threat of account suspension. They are allowing what goes and what doesn't though. Uh, you can post however many videos as you'd like, but please limit each to be at most 90 minutes long. No major story spoilers. Avoid showing the ending segments of the first three palaces while you can show the initial interactions with a character known as Yusuke. Avoid his awakening scene and the whole deal about the painting. Get rid of that. Also, don't post anything about a certain student investigator. There are a few other guidelines, but basically just don't post anything that's a major spoiler. You can post anything like dungeon crawling or running through the city or just enjoying the game. Just don't do story spoilers. I really didn't know that publishers were allowed to do this, but I guess they it makes sense. They have full control. I guess it's not that I didn't know they couldn't. It's that I didn't think they would. But hey, if they don't want their game spoiled for people, that makes sense. Streamers can just wait. You know what? You, if you're streaming this game, you probably have a big enough following already. I think they'll get over it. You can always stream it at a later time. A few weeks ago, I reported that Twitch is going to be going into the game selling market. They're going to compete with Steam. That is now live. Basically, if you see someone streaming a game that looks cool, you can buy it from there. If that streamer is partnered with Twitch, they'll be getting 5% of the proceeds, while 70% then goes to the developers, and the rest goes to Twitch. Twitch currently has 50 titles available for purchase. There's also DLC, and any purchase of at least $5 gets you a Twitch crate. These crates contain badges, emotes, and random other accessories, including some exclusive to the title purchase, if those exist. And from now until May, Twitch is hosting a crate giveaway drawing. This is some pretty interesting news. If someone can go up against Steam, it may honestly be Amazon and Twitch. Twitch has a massive user base and a bunch of people that love watching these different kinds of games. If they can get a discount on a game as well as support their favorite streamers, they're probably gonna do it. I could totally see this becoming a viable thing. Because let's be honest, the Microsoft Store has 
well, nothing going for it. Origin at least has games such as Battlefront and Battlefield that'll bring people over. Steam is Steam. Twitch has the following, the interaction, and the desire to support streamers. Like, each one kind of has its own thing going. They all support kind of their own thing, even though they are all, at the end of the day, just the digital content marketplace. Near Automata has now sold over a million copies, technically. To go a bit deeper into it, uh, it's a combination of digital sales and shipped games, meaning there aren't technically a million players that have it yet, but a million copies have been shipped out. The idea there is if they need to keep shipping out copies, that's because people keep buying them. This is awesome news, because you know what this means? This means that the general public is leaning more towards these kind of obscure, like cult status games. These are not your mainstream Call of Duties. These are weird games. Your mom walks in seeing you playing this game, they're gonna think, what the hell are you doing? This is awesome because these games are generally some of the best out there. And I think a lot of this is due to the recent success of all these games, such as Neo and now Persona. These games have been getting incredible reviews coming out all throughout the past few months of this year. Chances are high that you've picked up at least one of them and you probably enjoyed the hell out of it. This is a great year for games so far. It's good to see these sorts of titles making waves. Dragon Quest Heroes 2 has a demo out. The demo is on the PS4, it's available now, and it allows you to try out four of the game's 15 heroes. From what I know, this game is also coming to PC, but I don't see anything about a PC demo coming, but that's okay, I guess. The game is coming out later this month, you don't have much more time to wait for it. And lastly for today, Digital Foundry went in and gave us the deep details on Legend of Zelda's newest update. They found out that the frame rate has been greatly increased just throughout the game. One of the biggest places for frame rate drops, Kakariko Village, has now been much better and it's much closer closer to 30 frames throughout your time there. Korak Forest gets a little bit better, but it's not significantly much. And that's all on the Switch version. The Wii U also got the update, but the improvements are a little less significant. God, that's just the way things are nowadays, isn't it? Your game is buggy and shit at release. It's gonna get patched later on. We have to wait for that to happen, I guess. Anyways, that's about it for yesterday's news. Make sure to like the video if this recap helped you. Leave your thoughts in the comments below, guys. Generate that discussion on these news stories. I really wanna know what you think about this kind of stuff. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already for free daily news updates straight to your inbox every Tuesday to Friday. I'll see you guys tomorrow. This is Max signing off.